I got to tell you, here we are at the end of the season, and the pandemic is starting to recess a little bit. Not good, but not bad, and they're letting more things happen outside, at least. The car show today, today is the day at Blue Top, 4 o'clock. From 4 to 7, they're having a special, huge, it'll be a huge car show, and it's a benefit for the Highland Police Department, the people that keep everything up and up on the, at the Blue Top and on 41 there, and they keep everybody safe. They've escorted in some of the hot rod clubs, and they've really done a great job for the Blue Top, and the Blue Top likes to give a little bit back, okay? You can't blame them, because they're a great bunch of guys. The Highland Police Department has been really good. They are great guys, and they're not they're not your typical, I don't know, I, I don't want to get into it, but I'm going to tell you, they're good guys. That's all I got to, That's all I got to say. They are good coppers. I like them real well. That's at 4 o'clock today at the Blue Top. <clears throat> get a Big Ben burger. You'll love it. Coming up on the October 17th, October 17th in Wheatfield, Indiana, at the American Legion Post, 406 in Wheatfield, 10, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you're going to have a car show. Judging starts at 11.30, trophies at 1.30, big-time car show sponsored uh, at, the, at the American Legion Post. Proceeds all go to the American Legion Post, 406. This is put on by, it doesn't say, oh, well. JCVC to help veterans also, so that's a great thing. All right, let's, you want to get to that car show if you can do it. And plus, you know, every Tuesday night at Lencioni's on Glenwood Dyer Road in Linwood, you can go and there's a cruise night going on. It's a great and a great place to have a, have something to eat too. So, and you can get a you can get a beer or a cocktail there if you want. Now, I would not miss that one at Blue Top today because that was a great show. I'm going to be there. I'm I'm absolutely going to try and get to that one because it's a great show and those guys have been really really good to the hot rod community and helping blue top really crank it up all right we're back to talking about the car world here and there's a few things that you need to know and this is probably one that's kind of important because this ever goes away just when you thought stinky gate was over eric it drags me back in and it's not volkswagen this time it's fca chrysler will pay $9.5 million civil penalty to settle allegations it misled investors by not disclosing that it conducted only a limited internal review of its compliance with emission regulations, the top U.S. securities regulators said last Monday. In other words, <clears throat> Fiat Chrysler, which did not admit, admit any wrong or deny any wrongdoing, they're not saying, to resolve the Securities and Exchange Commission probe, declined to comment on the, fi on the fine that stems from the automaker's diesel emissions scandal. Do we know anything about that? We know everything about a diesel emissions scandal. And <clears throat> we've been farting with this for a long time, pal. Yeah. The Italian-American automaker in January 2019 agreed to a settlement worth about $800 million to resolve claims from the U.S. Justice Department and California Air Resources Board, or CARB, that it used illegal software that produce false test results on diesel emissions tests. Can you say defeat device? The U.S. government has stepped up enforcement of vehicle emission rules after Volkswagen admitted in September 2015 to intentionally evading emissions rules and has now incurred more than $30 billion in penalties and other costs. $30 billion Volkswagen has incurred for their cheating diesel pollution, the stinky gate as I call it, 30 billion, that's billion with a B, wow, holy smoly, that's a lot of dough, you ain't lying, that's big time dough, and they're paying through the nose too, now, remember when GM closed that Ohio plant in uh, Lordstown, I think it was, yes, well, guess what, GM Mo General Motors will now have to repay 28 million dollars in state tax incentives to Ohio, after the automaker came under heavy criticism, for closing its Lordstown assembly plant in Michigan 2019. GM announced its planned closure of the plant in Northeast Ohio in November 2018, along with three other plants, drawing condemnation from then U.S. President uh, Donald Ford and many other U.S. lawmakers. 
General Motors sold the plant last year to startup Lordstown Motors, which plans to hire 400 workers to build EV electric vehicle pickup trucks starting in 2021. The story behind the story here is General Motors decides that they're going to put this plant together and they're going to redo some things and they're going to invest some money in it. And they want all these tax incentives, incentives from local and state officials. And they get them. Uh, this one was to the tune of $28 million dollars little bargain, little, little deal, and they made a deal, and then they closed the plant. <laughs> so they, the state wants their money back. They want their tax money back, and they're going to get it. If you know anything about the state, federal government, and the tax collectors, the IRS, they're going to get it, okay? No matter what you say, they're going to get it. <laughs> more, more scandal. Former Audi CEO Rupert Stadler arrived in court in Munich Wednesday, Rupert, to face, that's a fun name to say, Wednesday, to face fraud charges as part of Volkswagen Group's emission cheating scandal that was uncovered by U.S. regulators five years ago. Old Rupi is in trouble. VW and Audi are caught, were caught disguising excessive diesel pollution, pollution by using illegal engine management software, defeat device, say it like it is, to falsify emissions readings during the anti-pollution tests. Overseas, they call them anti-pollution tests. Yeah, we call them emissions tests, but that's, you know. The automaker initially claimed the fraud was the work of a handful of engineers and that no senior managers were involved. But testimony from employees led prosecutors to remand Stradler into custody in four for four months in 2018. So Stadler's not a—he's not new to the to the to the joint. He's been in the joint before. Stadler is accused of knowingly selling cars that had manipulated engine software and did not comply with environmental standards. Of course, Stan, Stadler has denied the charges. Stadler is one of four former Audi executives to face charges. Also appearing before the court are former Audi's former development chief, Wolfgang Hotz, ex-diesel engine manager Giovanni Pamillo, and another former engineer, named, his only name they have is for him is Henning L. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But these guys are also on their way to club fed or well then i don't know in germany i don't know what they call it the der, der stinken place or something or der Stadlag. i don't know but he's going they're all going all those guys that stunk up our air are going and again ex uaw president man it's just scandal after scandal can we can we get out of this i mean that's, well this is probably the last one i hope ex uaw president williams has pled guilty to embezzlement the past two leaders of the UAW are now admitted felons. That's the last two presidents of the UAW. Dennis William, who served as the union's president from 2014 to 2018, pleaded guilty last Wednesday to embezzling money from the members he once led. As an officer of the UAW, I held a position of trust, William said. I know my actions and failures to act abuse that, or failure to act abuse that trust. I hurt the union I loved. I'm here now to take full responsibility. Sounds to me like he's trying to get from getting beat up by the boys in the band. His admission comes almost four months <clears throat> after his successor, Gary Jones, pleaded guilty to similar charges as part of a years-long federal corruption pose. Pro. He faces up to five years in prison, has a fine up to a fine of $250,000, although he'll likely receive a sentence between 18 and 24 months as part of a plea agreement. But hey, Another one bites the dust. Another UAW president going to the can, man. Is it, was was his apology really sincere, though? I, I mean, he's probably trying to make a deal. He probably wants to stay out of the joint. Come on. I mean, he's begging to stay out of the joint. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I get people want to get like you know very sentimental and be very apologetic for what they have done, but they did it knowing what you know. Like they did it on purpose. They were living the good life, Eric, exactly. off of the union's back, and off of the worker, the rank and file's back. And it, it was just like, if they if they got caught, that was going to be the price to well, pay. Well, yeah, you, you know you, you can't steal this money. Exactly. That's against the rules. I, you're not allowed to steal this money. Why do you do it? You do it, and then you go to jail. Right. But you're going to cry about it first and say, oh, I'm sorry I'm you are. I'm sorry, guys. Well, I guess apologize. what? He's got 
new cars. He's got clubs he belongs. He's got all golf clubs. He's got you name it. He's got it. When Probably st- a boat. When, when they steal and apologize, <sighs> I feel like their apology isn't sincere. Well, I think they should give everything up and live in a cabin. <laughs> And then that may that may change things. You know, you have to give up your servants and all your maids and your cooks, <laughs> and uh, the money that you took from the rank and file. And a lot of it was training money, which is essential to our production of automobiles in this country. That training money is absolutely essential. So that's what I mean. Like, is that is that apology really sincere? I don't. I I. You know what? I didn't hear it. I just read it, and I I wasn't there. And I'm no one to judge because I'm very cynical, as, as you know. <laughs> and I'm no one to ask if you if you really are sincere because chances are I'm going to tell you I think he's a crumb. But that's beside the point. I mean, I, I just I don't know. The, the second one to go to jail. There's been other. There's been vice presidents now. It's a, it's a trend. These are the presidents. There's two it, of them. It's a trend. Dennis Williams and Gary Jones have both been. They're they're in the can, man, for for stealing from the rank and file. And guess what? If you steal from the rank and file, that's the way it should be. But it should never be where you can do that. You shouldn't have a way of doing that. There should be checks and balances in order. Right. We shouldn't allow people to get there. We shouldn't allow these things to happen. We're, we're not a stupid society, Eric. I, I don't know how, how you can, in this day and age, with all the electronic surveillance and all the, I know exactly where every penny of my money is mm-hmm. every day. I get on the, I get on my bank website. I log in and I check out everything that's going on. How can this happen? How can I be missing twenty grand one day and not say anything? You know what I'm saying? I I, I have because the president, just... Mr. Williams, needed a new boat or a new car. I mean, come on. Like you said, he was living the good life. He got used to it. He got comfortable. He kept on doing it, and doing it, and doing it. And the moment that he got caught, it's like, oh, well, gee, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah, right. Thank you. Well, right. Guess what? Go to jail and get it over with. And quit stealing. <laughs> Nicola. Nicola. Oh, well, by the way, 928 Car Guys, if you want to weigh in. Or get on Facebook and write us a little note. We can. T- Eric will put you on the air. Put your question up. Nicola. Another one of these startup companies that's really in bed with a lot of people. Believe me. Nicola Corp is rescheduling its in-person Nicola World Conference where it's planning to show its electric pickup truck. As the company regroups in the wake of a stock sell-off and the departure of its chairman. Oops. Does Does this smack of Fisker? Keep reading, George. The postponement follows the startup's efforts to pivot from denying allegations of deception to making up its technology and partnerships to claim investors who have been seeing the stock price plunge, or to calm investors who have seen the stock price plunge 45% since the public, uh, company went public in June. Ah, shares of Nicola rose 2% to $18.23 as of a 10.33 a.m. in New York. <laughs> the stock has been hurt by claims that its company and its founder, former chairman Trevor Milton, misled investors about Nicola's capabilities and technology. Nicola and Milton, who stepped down on September 21st, have of course denied all these allegations. <clears throat> There's a startup that got a whole bunch of investors and got a whole bunch of money and hasn't built a truck yet, Eric. <laughs> We're still waiting for that first Nicola to roll off the line. Yeah. I don't think this is going to happen, if you want to know the truth. (laughs) Oh, well. And last week I told you about Governor Newsom in California, the land of fruits and nuts, talking about we're going to have all electric cars by 2035. We're not going to to let you sell anything internal combustion after 2035, blah, blah, blah. They want to have all these on the road by 2025. And now, and they're thinking, wow, how can California handle this? The head of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, on Monday questioned California Governor Gavin Newsom's plan to require all new passenger car sales in 2035 be zero emission models, according to a letter seen by Reuters. EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler said the plan to raise serious questions regarding its legality and practicality and said it could impact the state's electrical grid. Well, of course it will. You're going to go all electric. You better have some power. 
California's record, now here we go, California's record of rolling blackouts, unprecedented in size and scope, coupled with recent requests to neighboring states for power, asks the question, how do you expect to run an electric car fleet that will come with significant increases in electricity demand when you can't even keep the lights on today? Newsom did not immediately comment. I'm telling you, <clears throat> the land of fruits and nuts breeds some really strange leaders, I'm going to tell you. They talk some silly, silly, silly stuff. I, I, I could see, I think I could see Illinois. I live in Illinois, Indiana. I could see us going totally electric by 2035. But not California. They have no grip on anything. They, they, uh, they, they don't know what they're doing. They're, it's crazy. Don't get me started. Here's